I got a secret for you. How to fix bad credit forever. Ever and ever and ever. Yes, follow the directions in this video and you will fix your bad credit and you'll never have bad credit again. How's that? Hey there, internet. This is Glendon Cameron, founder of Hustlers Kung Fu, the launch pad for beginning baby hustlers. If you want to develop wealth through entrepreneurship, you're in the right place. So let's get cracking. Be sure to subscribe. Very important. Trust me on that. All right. So I got a lot of people who are coming in and say, Glendon, I want to be part of Hustle Camp. I want to be part of this. For those of you who want to be part of Hustle Camp, I'm going to do a single payment prepayment option check below the video for that let's get enough into the credit situation the first thing that you need to do to make sure that you don't have bad credit is to live below your means this is one of the biggest things that get people in trouble with credit one they live beyond their means and they use credit as an extension of income stop doing that number two the way that you can have good credit forever and ever and ever. Don't use your credit cards. I know you're like, whoa, 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 Glendon. I want to use the credit cards because I want to get stuff. That new TV. I want to get the new washer and dryer. I, and I don't have the money, but see, that's, that's the thing. You don't have the money. Which brings me to point number three. Need to make more money. I feel for you deep in my heart. You've got to make more money. This is the blueprint for having perfect credit. If you can, you know, I know people are just like, you know, gonna hate and go ahead and let's take a moment for the haters to leave dislikes and go on and be mad because they don't want to do it the right way. They want to do it the scammy way. They want to do it the underhanded way. They don't want to do it the right way. So go ahead, leave your hate. You, you, you gone, you, you gone, you left, good. Building up your income. And let's just go ahead for the United States of America. Like I said in the video the other day, if you've got 10 grand, you are ahead of most people. So let's say the average person in this country does 2,500 to 4,500 bring home. Let's just deal with the bring home. Let's not deal with gross income because that's a misleading. If you doubled your 2,500 to 5,000, or if you doubled your 4,500 to 9,000, you double your purchasing power. That's what you need to focus on. Not like, hey, you know, I make 100 grand, but oh yeah, they're taking $38,000 out of my check before I get it. Double your income. You need to start a business. You need to start a business. I'm gonna say that one more again for the people in the back. You need to start a business. You've doubled your purchasing power, which once you understand how to start a business, it's not that difficult. It is more of knowing what to do and when to do it and double or triple your expected time to reach there. Let's say you, you, you're coming out strong, right? You're really dedicated to building your business and you think it's gonna take you three months, right? Okay, so let's use Cameron's Law. Let's triple that. So it's really gonna take you a year. You know, like three months, triple it, a year. So that's the, the thing. This is what gets most people. It's like, hey, I'm doing some, uh, I need some results in 60 days. Your business doesn't really give a damn if you need some results in 60 days. Your business is gonna give you the results once you do the right things, and that's how it is. Today, or it's gonna be two years from now. That's how your business is gonna be like, look, man, you, you are not stroking me correctly. You are not petting my ears, you're not rubbing my back, you're not making my tail wag. So, you know, your business is going to treat you like a broke dick dog. Just like, don't don't come when you call because you're not stroking your business right, which is going to take some time for you to learn how to do. The fourth step, this is very important, to make yourself a promise that once you clean up the derogs and get rid of this stuff, that you are going to work very hard to stay ahead of the curve, meaning you're gonna have an emergency fund of $10,000. So you don't have to like go to credit because you got the money. You're gonna live your life in a certain manner that credit is not that big of a part of it. I know this is about fixing your credit, 
I know it's about getting a high credit score. I understand. But hear me and hear me now. If you go ahead and get the $100,000 credit card and you go ahead and buy some real estate with that $100,000 credit card, people pay their rent on time, they don't tear up your stuff, that house of cards is going to work just fine. But if someone misses one payment and then your whole house of cards come down, it wasn't built properly. You should be able to take several hits. You should be able to take at least 10 hits before your stuff comes down if you build it properly. Most people, they're, they're this thing called leverage. They're leveraged to the nifth degree. They're leveraged to the hilt. And if one thing goes wrong, it comes down. And some people are a little bit be, you know, better leveraged. They have maybe two, three, four years. They can withstand one punch. They can withstand two punches. They can withstand three. They can withstand four. You want to be in that five to seven punch territory, which means you're not going to be that leveraged. So that is how you go ahead and you develop bulletproof credit. This is how you go ahead and set yourself apart from everyone else because here's the thing. Going out there, you're, you're, you're fixing your credit and you're fixing your credit before you fix your life. And what I mean by that is there are certain things that you have done that are outside of some dire cancer diagnosis or some life-changing event and these things happen and your credit goes bad it's not because you were spending or living above your means these things happen but they ain't most of y'all caught up in the matrix and the matrix is taking names giving out the merits because you're trying to flex on an income that you really can't flex on you don't have the new what Audi you don't have the new Porsche you don't have the new BMW you got that Honda that's what your budget dictates that you can have is a Honda or your budget dictates that you can have a is a Toyota that's what your budget dictates you know BMW ball out on a Toyota budget as long as everything is perfect you're good now how often does everything stay perfect the fixing of the credit once again we're gonna apply Cameron's law again it's probably gonna take you three to four times as long as you think it will to clean it up this is what you got to do fuckery that you know people are talking about like this company they will you know pay them to put a trade line okay here are your trade lines visa mastercard uh, macy's uh, sears jc those are your trade lines anything other than that is probably not going to work the same it is probably going to be a scram uh there's this thing where secure, some some weird thing where you pay money for the CD. I forget the name of it, but it's not really going to work. If you're like marginal on your credit situation, it's going to give you a marginal situation. It's not going to give you like a big come up. It's just not. You're going to have more of a come up from. Hold on. I, I need to go check on something. You got to stop living like that. Let's get into the real nitty gritty of the credit repair. Like I said, it's gonna take you two to three times as long to clean it up. You must be diligent when you are sending out your first letters. And like I said in previous videos, do not dispute online. Dispute with paper, meaning you, you have a paper version of your credit report, right? The letters, and you send that letter in and you send it by certified mail. You do not send it by regular mail and because you can't prove that you sent it when you send it because Here's the secret. One of the ways you can get stuff off your credit report is to make the credit bureau take it off, even if it's true, due to policy and procedure. For those of you who want to talk to me about credit, okay, it does not pay me any money to talk to you. I, I've, I've, you know, a nice lady, I saw her in the comments, like, hey, you know, how can I get in touch with you? You can't. You can't. Uh, if it's, you know, you can ask Patty some questions and it's just gonna get to a point. I, I'm not even gonna say I hate to be like this. This is business. This is real life. I'm teaching you something here. Because one, when you start your business, you're gonna wanna be paid for your productivity. You're gonna be paid for your knowledge base. You're gonna wanna be paid for what you do. And all of this, hey brother man, hook me up, uh, let's talk. Uh, I mean, someone called me, left me their number, like I'm gonna call them back. I am not your girlfriend with a penis. 
I'm not gonna call you back and make love to your dreams and ambitions over the phone. Oh yeah, John. Ooh, John. Oh, John. No. Just saying. Just put that there. Because whenever I put out a tip like that, people are like, hey, I, I want clarification, man. How do you, you know, uh, point me in? No, 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 no. You, you got to take the course. You got to get in there. Straight up. Because like I said, in these videos, I will point you in the right direction. And if you're smart enough to figure it out, cool. No problem. No skin off my penis. But if you are not that smart or, you know, and I, I'm going to tell you toward the end of the video why a lot of people can't figure this stuff out. I need help and that's what we're here for. Okay, now back to challenge that stuff. We send a certified mail, we get the certified mail back, and then this is where you have to be on your P's and Q's. You have to forcefully go to the credit bureau like, look, you did not investigate this. Now, they know that most people are not going to sue. They know this. They're just not going to go for it. It's like, I'm going to sue you. They go like, <laughs> they get that email every hour on the hour, like, you know, 3,000 times a day. I'm going to sue you, right? And then at the end of the month, there's like one or two people who actually sue. And then they fold. Now, I'm going to tell you this. When you get them, when you catch them slipping, right, you have to have the ability and the desire that you're going to sue. What I mean is, you need to familiarize yourself with the Fair Credit Act. Um, I don't, I'm not even sure of the initials. You need to familiarize yourself with it and have your lawsuit paperwork filled out and send the copy with your letter to the credit bureau. Because see, one of the things is, you actually went online to download the phone, the form, or you went to the courthouse and you actually fill that shit out. They gonna pay attention to that because 99% of y'all will not do that. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. Those infractions add up. I mean, you could get someone like, let's see, one, two, three, four. Now this was years ago. I had them on five infractions and I believe it was a thousand bucks. It was 5,000 bucks or delete. Guess what? They deleted. It's like, wait a minute. Uh, we ain't trying to take an L for this company. We ain't trying to take no L's. Of course, yes, Mr. Cameron. Yes, this is gone. Here's gone. Now here's something else that you may have not known. There is what's called suppression and there's what's called deletion. Suppression is when someone looks at your credit for profile, it just doesn't show up anymore, but it's still there. And if someone does like a manual review, which they do for more uh, big mortgages over like 500,000, uh, they do this for large life insurance policies. This is called a full-fledged background check. There's something else, but it's a, it's a big background check. And they will actually manually pull your credit report. And if the stuff is not deleted, it's still on there, it's gonna show up. But if it's deleted, it come, you know, it's gone. They, there is no resurfacing. And that's something else too that when they suppress stuff. Sometimes it will show up again because it's been suppressed and it hasn't been deleted. So you want full deletion, which is what I got because I got a tax lien off, I got repossession of a car, I got, this stuff was true. It was true, but the thing is, I caught them slipping. And this is the whole thing about why you must follow all of these procedures and tips. Leather, you cannot dilly-dally play around. It's just not gonna work because they, they know that most of you will not sue and they're not worried about you suing. For those of you with the heart, those of you who will go down there, because like I, I'll tell you, and this is completely unrelated. Uh, when I was going through my child support stuff, I would go down to the courthouse and look at uh, court proceedings, learn the rules of evidence, uh, learn the, the proceeding of how court worked, knew the words, knew what to say. Everyone, I mean, I was like the only one there. Everyone else was there because they had a case. I mean, seriously, if you take the initiative to go down there and see how due process works, it'll blow your mind. I learned this technique because I was going to court because uh, first thing is jurisdiction, all right? First of all, this guy was in court 
and he was in this gray suit and it, it, it didn't even fit right like he got it from a thrift store and he was up there and he threw this thing out there and he said under section such and such I challenge the jurisdiction of this thing this jurisdiction of this case and I that's and before we go forward with the case I'm gonna challenge jurisdiction so he and the judge kind of go back and forth and then the judge like okay he looks at some paper and then he asks this other person who was there he's like um where did this happen and they're just like oh this happened here and then the guy said well we don't have jurisdiction over that county dismissed i was like blown away i was like whoa 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 wait 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 so he didn't even get into the case it was just like because uh the rule of law and like i said you know i, I may get a little tighter on this because it's been a long time since i had to go this i used to know this stuff really tightly but the rule of law is so important to these cases and where you can sue, how you can sue. And like, you know, with federal court, you could just, you just submit your testimony that's written. And then I learned, I had a situation where one of these uh, collection companies, we were going to court, their lawyer comes in, I'm sitting there, I'm like nervous, right? I'm nervous. And then they, they call us up and I was like, I want to cherish jurisdiction. I don't think they have jurisdiction over me. And then the judge like, okay. And he asked a few questions. And it's like, oh, you don't have a license to collect in this state. Dismissed. I'm telling you. So that's just your tips. Now, this is why so many of y'all have a hard time learning this. You're addicted to video games. You are addicted to this immediate gratification thing. And I'm not trying to be weird. I'm not trying to knock you. I'm just saying that you are allowing your brains to be reprogrammed where those are people like me who still read books, uh, who still can read a 30 minute sentence, uh, 30, you know, read for 30 minutes without getting a headache. We're going to crush you because a lot of this stuff with video games is good for internet only stuff, but the world is so much bigger than the internet. And if you don't have these skills of being able to study, being able to problem solve, being able to really sit down and look at something objectively and have deductive reasoning, you're gonna be in trouble because many of you have allowed your brains to be reprogrammed and rewritten through the social media. And I've been saying this for years that you need to have social media timeouts, you need to have internet timeouts, you need to turn the TV off and you need to read. You need to draw, you need to paint to get that cognitive thing going, all right? All right, so those are your tips this time. Now, for those of you who are, wanna be part of Hustle Camp, under this video, I'm gonna leave a link. And it's like someone asked for single pay. It's like, hey, I can't pay every two weeks, I can pay once a month. This is a prepayment plan. You do not get in there before you finish your payments. Just to be clear about that, it is a prepayment plan, just letting you know. So just to be clear, prepayment plan, and then you know that will lock in whatever, like if you know you're on the prepayment plan and I double the price, you good. You you, you know, as long as you keep paying your payments, and you know, it, we, we'll, we'll be flexible with that. All right, so this is Glendon Cameron founder of Hustlers Kung Fu. Be sure to subscribe, be sure to like this video, and leave a smart ass comment. I'm waiting for it. I am seriously waiting for it. I am. It's for the gate.